and other guests joining me today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, so my name's Alison um, and I'm from Premier Beauty in Russia. I've been going to Alison for uh, my thank you and uh, she is absolutely amazing. Thanks. She um, is trying to make her business more accessible for anybody with disabilities and for Alison has been very helpful and uh, I'm very, really, very really enjoying going to New York. It's a bit at home, but it's amazing because it's your personal experience. You go on and Alison looks definitely so well. Oh, thanks. Have you, um, when did you start learning pretty skincare? Um, so I think it goes back to probably the first kind of NC that I've done, the first qualification. So that was like 25 years ago. So like forever. Um, so that's like a taster, you know, an introduction to beauty. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And then I wanted to go on and do the HND, which is another two years and it's much more advanced. Um, and I just, I loved it. I was just obsessed. Amazing. Yeah. So have you always had your own business or did you work for um, someone? Nope. So originally I worked for um, the Hilton. So I worked like managing salons, different things like that. So that was fun and I really enjoyed it. But an am amazing training, you know, in terms of management, skincare, treatments, um, it was really fun and then obviously a lot of incentives with amazing skincare. We had Clarins and Talbot and we would be incentivised and we would get these lovely creams every month um, that I could never have afforded with a newborn baby. Um, so that was quite luxury, felt quite extra having all this makeup and all this skincare and playing with it all. Um, so that was amazing but when I had my daughter it was really difficult because big companies don't care about you, you yeah. know. Um, you're just a name, a number, you know, phoning me in on my day off, you know, to do this, do that, doing tasks that weren't part of my job, taking me out of the treatment room, much, much more like admin and then like managing staff. I'm quite a soft touch. So people just walk all over me because I don't want to upset anybody. So I love beauty, I love my job, it's my passion, but I'm not good at managing people, I don't think. So that's why you now just being self-employed for the last 16 years, working myself on just a one-to-one. -one. I love that because there's never two days the same. It depends how the client's feeling. I think I'm quite empathic. So when they come in, I can sense what they might need. And if it's not what they're booked in for, we can change it. And then if they're interested in skin, you just kind of shut me up. <laughs> that's amazing, that's amazing. How can you tell when someone needs something? Like something? Can you tell by their stress? Can you? Uh, how do you know? Um, it's like an energy, I think. See, when you're quite empathic and you're quite open, yeah. and particularly when you're into holistics, you know, about Reiki, about energies and balancing. If the person that comes in is open to you, some people are quite guarded, closed off, can't read them at all. But somebody is open and gets a good vibe for you, you get a wee connection. And mm -hmm. then once they start to chat, if you listen, you just kind of feel what they need um so i love that and then people learn to trust me and then go with my suggestion and then we kind of work together to find a balance you know sometimes there might be a lot going on in their life and they're quite stressed and i just want to do something to make them feel better and to relax um or they might have something special coming up we need to make the skin really glowy mm -hmm. um or if we're being greedy we just do a combination of it all yeah because um a lot of people were well, including me quite um they've uh, my skin I've always been quite lucky that I'm um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got good skin. But sometimes I have, like, people that go through them. My face, I think I'm very thinking to myself. So, like, I'm still conscious about it. Mm -hmm. Where some people do them, they're like, I mean, I know the look like it's always like, you know, people like, uh, worried about the skin, worried about how they look. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel, when I come, when I come into the studio, I don't, I feel that like I mean, I don't know why. I think it's because it's important I look after my skin. Mm -hmm. It's important um, I learn from you because I know nothing about things here. And when you talk to me about it, I would actually like, do you know I'm comfortable mm -hmm. now? Because what I learn from you, yeah. I do look after my skin. Um, just when I come for treatment, I took you when I left the uh, home star on, I was like, I think it's amazing, and I can't wait to come back for more. I mean, I have to be very, she knows a lot, she's very knowledgeable, she knows um, 
Dr. Timmen, Arne, så der fik, øh, fik du nu gæst mig, og der fik du det, og mente den. Nej, så havde det der med det. Det var virkelig gød, og det var gød. Jeg kan ikke komme bare på morgen. I think it's half the battle we enjoy it. I just love anything to do with holistics and anything to do with skin. And then now there's so many treatments available. So instead of just kind of doing what I've always done, mm-hmm. like the last two years, I've kind of upskilled, learned a lot of advanced things, but the, those skills can still revert back to my original kind of base. Um, so it's exciting. And I love it when a client's interested because then we can talk skin and we can talk aftercare. Because as much as the treatment's amazing, you want it to last longer is to follow the wee tips at home. Yeah. And it's just suggestions, you know. Um, so, yeah, no, I think if they're coming in and they feel, you know, safe and comfortable and it's a safe space and they feel relaxed, just over time we build a rapport and it becomes like you're more like friends, you know. And Yeah, that too, because I have been through that long before. And when you got the treatment done, and I thought, bye, damn, can I? Like? Then I don't look after me though. Mm-hmm. We had different when I go into you, that one. We talk about from start to funny, like brain everything, and then that motivate that motivate me to go home and look after because I've learned from you. So if anybody like want to um, learn more about skin care or look after their skin, you can get the other thing. I'm gonna put her link below, and uh, she's got lots of videos on her Instagram as well. And you can watch them and see what she does. Yeah, I think we the treatments and stuff like that, I think it's not just the coming for the treatment. I think it's the consult, you know, before. Yeah. So when we talk with the text, ask questions, so that I know roughly what we're doing. It's the coming on the day, but then it's just as much as that is the aftercare. I want you to do the bits at home. I want your skin to last longer. I want it to feel good. Um, yeah, so I think it's the kind of three steps, you know, that makes it that wee bit more personal. But I enjoy that. So I like to have that in a regular client. Whereas if somebody comes as a one-off and maybe had a gift voucher or mm-hmm. something, um, sometimes you can tell they actually don't want to come. So maybe somebody's got them a treatment and they're not quite sure. Um, so that's a shame. Um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll do the consult and then if the treatment's for maybe like a massage and it's maybe a lady that's never been to a salon before, she's really self-conscious, she doesn't want to undress, I'll try and build her trust, you know, be chatting and what else can we do? So maybe a treatment where she can keep her clothes on, she can just get used to me, so maybe even just like a wee facial or, or nails or something where she can get to know me and feel comfortable. And then what I found is eventually where some of the clients still come and they'll be like, oh, maybe I will have a wee massage. That makes me feel good. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really good. I, um, that's perfect for people when they listen to that, that they don't have to do and uh, You can um, have a... Which one? You can tap between these two and you make them feel comfortable. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what different about you? Have you, like, do you have any treatment that totally different from other talon? Or do you know, like, uh, what do, I, do you know, find it quite difficult competing with other talon? No, I don't think about it like that. I don't compete. I'm in my own wee bubble in my head I and mean, I'm just thinking about me and my clients, what want to do and what treatments I think they like and what training is available for that. So my basics are the same as a lot of therapists in that, you know, I've done the basics of waxing and massage, very basic facials, like that stuff just, um, I don't do anything like that anymore. It's so much more advanced, but the basics, and that was fun. And then just building it on for there. Um, there is a lot of places that do a lot of the advanced things I do, but I think they're, they're generally in big clinical settings you know, big salon settings, you know, with maybe like four or five therapists, hairdressers, busy, busy, noisy. So I think where my niche is, is that I just found, like myself, I have um, quite bad anxiety and things like that. And I like smaller groups, smaller spaces. I just feel more comfortable. And I think that's where I come out my shell. And I think your vibe attracts your tribe, as in like my clients kind of feel similar. So I feel like that as well, because being deaf and I go into that on, it's so noisy. Mm-hmm. And they all run away, and that just felt, um, make me anxious. It's quite overwhelming. Because uh, and I, I just feel like um, I'm supposed to be here to be pampered and relaxed, but I don't feel like that when I go on to have a dad on. So when I come to you, it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's just so calm, mm-hmm. and I feel like 
Hello? The way you think that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, then you can tell her before you're better. Yeah. I didn't mean what to call me that week. Um, so the, the weighted blankets are anti anxiety. So I think it's creating the whole thing. So like when the client comes in, that they walk through and there's no clutter uninterrupted, they come into the salon, that the lighting's nice, and um, there's a big comfortable chair, nice candles, you've got the weighted blanket, you've got the big um, physiotherapy bed, you know, it's really spongy and comfortable. Um, and it's just all the wee elements, you know, and maybe if somebody's quite anxious, we use a wee bit of aromatherapy on the pulse points, do some nice deep breathing, we set the music oh. nice. So it's just all the little things, see, before you get to the treatment, client feels good, feels quite special, quite relaxed, but that's what I'm doing. I'm working on it like we spoke. I don't think, oh, there's a facial in, there's a massage in. I think about the person and how they are and what I know about them and how they felt and whatever, and then I just kind of customise it. So I just kind of chop and change things and I bring elements and maybe a couple of different treatments into one. Um, so I like to do it that way. So although there's lots of people do what I do, they don't do it in the one-to-one. And I think, and obviously we be Lola. Um, so that's where I think it stands out a wee bit and that's the kind of clientele I have that enjoy that small one-to-one space. Um, it might not be for everybody, but it works for me. Just, what are the popular treatment? What the most popular when people come? Well, I'd say different categories. So obviously the basic treatments are like the practical things. So I do a lot of like waxing, so like Hollywood waxing, kind of advanced thing, because again... It's quite a personal treatment, you know, so once you do it well for a good price, people are comfortable, they wouldn't go anywhere else because it's really hard to build up that trust to undress, you know, the bikini line and um, for it to be done properly as well. So we do a lot of that and that's the basics. And then in the massage side, I would say uh, the holistics like lava shells, you know, so the hot lava shell uh, with the organic green tea and mango oil and lovely body brush, you know, it's just a lovely natural product. Um, because that's an amazing company that worked with them as well, you know, that they... That the nut to my, that the nut to my, I am coming to tell you, and I just do, I keep lying, but I'm coming. It literally is fun. like a, ma- a magic massage, and um, people have it, you know, and they literally feel drunk, they kind of drive for like half yeah. an hour after it, because the heat is so sedative, so it's so relaxed and so calming, but the heat also, when you have a tense muscle, each movement with the shell is like 10 manual strokes, so literally me doing that, you know, you'd have to do 20 or 30 strokes to get that heat. The heat acts like as a wee iron and it just stretches it all out so the muscles become relaxed. So mm-hmm. you've got stress relief, you've got the heat, you're getting rid of all the toxins. And again, you can make it quite an home therapy and light. Um, I have some guys that are like into heavy training at the gym and the muscles are solid. They're literally not lumps out there with this thing. Um, so you can make it very personal um, and generally do a full hour in the back which is my signature treatment for it um, that is literally amazing I love doing that because the result at the end is amazing wow. um, I'm not trying to do it yeah. and then skin wise obviously you've got all your advanced stuff so you've got your classic facials um, and then obviously all your other bits, bits is like your dermaplaning uh, your peels uh, your mesotherapy and your skin boosters so although they're different treatments, they can encompass into like an advanced facial, so like a supercharged facial, and we do all the elements like in the one. So that's amazing. It is more high end, but you're going deeper. It's more effective. It's lasting longer. So it's really good, say, like, say for low maintenance, for busy mums and maybe can of come. Like normally a facial, you would come every four, six weeks, or at a maximum eight yeah. weeks just to keep the skin ticking over. Um, be something like that you might not come for a wee bit longer and as long as you've got kind of basic home care you should still feel your skin really good so I love doing that because again you're doing so much work to the skin it's literally glowing for the gods amazing yeah that's my favourite dog do you treat me do you treat me do you have your body or do you know like they've done for it when it comes to consultation and consultation with it a bit had a reaction what would you do right well, I think I would have been proactive before that. So depending if I'm using something that I potentially think could be reactive. So say it was like a lash lift where you've got peroxide near the eyes or if it was a new client for HD brows, these things require patch test anyway. So for your insurance, you must patch test like one week or 48 hours before, depending on the product. It will go behind the ear and then I'll send the client away. If they have a reaction, they will message me, which has only ever happened once, I think in like 25 years. 
um, and I will just get them to like wash it off with hot soapy water and we just know at that time that they're not suitable. It doesn't mean that in like so many months time we can try again. Um, also we're really strict with see post COVID, a lot of people that have used products and been fine would now react. So again, it's just being professional and knowing that you need the client to come, you need um, the kind of patch test, and then that way they can still react, but at least you've done, you know, your due diligence, you're looking after the client. Um, if I were to do maybe something advanced skin, the skin would be a bit reactive. It wouldn't so much be an allergic reaction. It might just be like, I'm really sensitive. So see the next day I would look red yeah. and I would feel sensitive for 24 hours, but see, because I know the results, I don't mind the journey and the experience because I'll just make sure I'm not going out that day or I can put mineral makeup over it just to cover it. Um, and I know at the end of that week when all that dead skin lifts away and all the kind of goodies work in and I do my home care and my masks, that it will be well. So I think it's just knowing that the client knows the aftercare and what to do. And if they ever have any worries, they can just message me and I'll talk them through it anyway. Amazing. Yeah. No, I had a very bad breath and I wasn't a fiat. <laughs> I think it was um, one of the beauty therapists. She didn't actually did it really well. I had my leg wet. I've had it done quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they would done one different and she did it. But you don't know she did it until I had a big tan. A couple of days later, I went back for a big tan. And you can see it by my, it's it almost like it's my skin. How the skin has come off. Come off. Yeah. But you didn't feel it too and hot at the time. I was conscious that I had to go a party for that. Mm. I, was, I know I could change the joint, but I bought this too. But, um, so when the wax went on, you didn't feel it too hot at the time? I have no idea. The amount of experience, and she doesn't do what new does. That put me right off. So, um, but when uh, I found you on social media in the Glasgow Garage Club, I would like, I've never felt too comfortable. I mean, it, you're right, it's all about the money trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, um, it's so important that the person who's doing the treatment knows what they're doing. Yeah. Isn't that? I think if you care, but it's half the battle. Like a lot of the time I've been like first bad days with my friends and it's great when you get a therapist and you can tell they're happy to be there, they enjoy their job, they want to make you feel good. And then if the other ones where they've literally came to get me for the reception, drew the eyes off me, took me into the room and you can hear the heavy breathing that and they're just like kind of half hearted. You can sense that energy. So I think if you enjoy it, it's half the battle because you're always thinking what to do, how to make it nice, looking after the client. Like say when we waxing, we generally would take either the wax or the roller wax. We would do a wee strip before mm -hmm. we start doing the full leg and we would say, how is that? Because everybody's reaction to heat is different. So you might do that on two people and one might say that's fine and somebody might say, oh, that's quite warm, in which case you can turn the wax down. I think the problem here, I'll be honest, I think I'm dead. She was scared to communicate with me. Yeah. I don't think she was dead for So I think she thought of like she wanted to get over it done quickly. Mm -hmm. But that's not really good for people with hearing law because no. if you too scared to work with them, then, yeah. you know, that ended up badly. So um, I think when you're going to a business star on, and I don't think a lot of people tell them that we are there because when we do, they're not there for well. Mm -hmm. And I think you need it bearing. Yeah. And it made that three not people who don't talk to them and go back again. So I would like you to explain to everybody what we do to help a deaf person or how you're going to make the business more accessible for them. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think initially, obviously, you've been really helpful for me in that. And then I put my hands up and say I wasn't as inclusive as I thought. But then I met you, and then you're doing an amazing job with what you're doing, trying to educate everybody. So Thank you very much. No, I did want um, I don't want um, to, I did want to um, make you feel comfortable because when you have a deaf person come, and everybody will move around and you're like, and you do anything to help them. And that's good for your business. It's all about being inclusive. Mm -hmm. And I'm a team sometimes, like, I'm working with deaf people, but I'm working with people like me and Laura and so many people. And I was just want to make them feel comfortable too and learn from me.
you make everybody feel comfortable though. Oh, thank you. Even if I first met you, I felt really comfortable with you. I think we both get passion for what we're doing and we're just similar type people. Um, so, yeah. That too, because I'm trying to encourage people not to judge people because they don't know. Like, if somebody turns up a business and it's a lot for them to learn, they've got to learn what they're doing. They've got to just check the time that they're going to work it. And they're probably not like their career or anything. So, um, I always like help them and help them be more disability with their career rather than attack the business because some people are like, oh, no, not their career. But that's what they do. Flap up. Help them out. So that's my... Yeah, you're educating them. The new dog going to yeah. be in, making them um, aware of knowledge and help them, support them. So um, that's what I'm trying to do. And I hope um, it would help a lot of people. I think it definitely is. What I've learned for you so far is even like the consultation process. Um, so you taught me about obviously videos, captions. Um, we spoke about things. Laura at the GGC, she gave me a good idea um, about Zoom. You know, so somebody wasn't coming to the salon initially, it was just maybe sounding me out. And we could do Zoom. I could look into obviously how I could caption it. We could have a wee consult where they can see me. Could maybe show them the salon. Um, could obviously have some text written down that could be sent or viewed, you know, to describe, you know, well, kind of like my brochure, you know, that it gives the treatment information. That's a good starting point. Then if they feel comfortable, obviously they can come into the salon and again, whatever equipment I need to do that can be there, you know, whether it's written, whether it's verbal. Um, and then I think what I've thought now is obviously being deaf aware, so each treatment, um, when I do the consultation, can we explain a bit more? You know, so like say when you had the lash lift and the closed eyes, it was quite an experience. So obviously we spoke about that. And when the eyes are closed, I think it's understanding the process. So what each process is, how long it's going to be on for. We had worked out that I could tap you on the shoulder mm -hmm. just every now and again, just so that you could put your thumb up and let me know you were okay. Again, by that point, I think we'll see because you would trust me, you'd be a bit more relaxed eyes, maybe we didn't water as much, so maybe we wouldn't be as reactive. Or if you felt panicked and we needed to take one of the steps off a bit quicker, you could just let me know by raising your hand. Definitely. So there is always ways to work it where you're still in control and we're working together. But if you know that I'm looking out for you and everything's okay, um, and you know that you might feel a wee sting in the eyes, I don't think you would be as frightened when you felt it. And then knowing at the end I'm going to get a lovely wee cold eye bath and we're going to rinse it all out and it's all going to be good. Um, so I think that's what I've learned. And then obviously after Kate, you know, just having, you know, lots of good kind of brochure information going forward. I'm trying to work with Heather at One for Growth and Laura with GGC to make my content more inclusive in terms of we're trying to learn about captions and what we can do to make things more accessible that way i'm not great with technology so i'm still learning but um i think we're all wanting to do better so that's really good and I'm, a actually, that's from you. I'm actually in a process of figuring out the captain uh -huh. i'm uh, going to speak to them so once i've got all that sorted i'm going to make into a, what's called it, a video uh -huh. like step by step tutorial how to do the captain so i think across it goes okay. <laughs> it's been a long protest for me, to be honest. It'll be really helpful though, because like I said to you before, I want to do more and I want to do better, but I go into my phone or I go into the Zoom and I don't know what I'm doing or when I was doing a live, I didn't know if I could do captions and get quite stressed about it because I want to do it. But it's education, I don't know. And that's where you are. Yeah, but that, that uh, app upon, I think it's going to be amazing. But I'm in talk with them to know to think across, it won't be wrong. But it's... Um, it might be the best bring across. I don't know how many times how many I have I've been on to, but I think that one might be the best. So what's out for that? Just at me. Yeah, well you doing that is gonna set the kind of groundwork for everybody going forward. If you can do that, educate people and then you've got all people in different sectors, you know, flying the flag. Um it's really exciting. So if you think where we are now, like where we've been like twelve months. It's oh, really exciting. I know that by because I went to the high school to do a talk and um, I want that thing to improve massively from when I was little up to now and I want to make things more inclusive and accessible and that three years, five years, ten years time for people because 
I'm hoping that I really care. It didn't need to be talked about. Do you know what I mean? It's automatically there. Captains are always there. Everything's always there. No one needs to have a uh, dress like me type thing, Captain. But I think Facebook is pretty confusing just now, especially changing over from the, uh, what do you call it? The Ameta or something? Mm. I'm not very good at talking to me though. Oh, no, yeah, you're so much better than me. <laughs> I can do the design, I can put pictures on, but, like, for example, like, I think I prefer Instagram. Yeah. Facebook, there's quite a lot involved in it, mm. and I think the captain, it needs to be, like, switched on somewhere and you can't find it. Yeah. Especially I live with Instagram, it's quite simple to find. Yeah. And especially on stories. And you can add captain any stories. Oh, well, before we leave today, if you show me that, because that would be good, because I do my stories every day. So if you great. can show me that. Yeah, I definitely yeah. will do that. Do that. But in an uh, Facebook, it gets more complicated. So um, again, I'm going to do a, I might even do a, what do you call it, a live one day mm -hmm. to talk about all that. I think so, because people that maybe don't realise aren't as inclusive and things, if you can show that, it makes them less scared, you know, because sometimes people are just ignorant because they're frightened to speak up for saying the wrong thing. So if you can do something like that, I think it'll, it's something that's doable. Um, and that people, you'd be surprised, actually, more people probably want to get involved than you realise. I will do that. That's my, one of my... So, um, back to your business. Um, let's see. Uh, a young girl wanted to become a British captain or worked in the thing here. Would it be very difficult for her to do a job communicating with clients? Or do you think what you've done, like you made it with book, you think it will work for her, make it into with book, and then she can get to know a client and her client get to know her? I think that would be a good example to do them because they don't have to work in a busy town. I'm worried and get answered, can't come in, they can do exactly what you're doing. Yeah, I think there's so many different ways. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. I think initially you need the passion. If you get into that type of job and it's not your passion, it won't work for you. Uh, you've got to really want to do it, enjoy to do it, have that thirst for learning. Then from there, you would need to go to obviously like your college or your training academy. You would need to make sure initially you had the qualifications that would allow you to get into that. Um, and then from there, you would need to see um, what's in place there to support learning and education. But the good thing is, like these careers places, advice places, you can always get an appointment and then whatever can be in place, you know, that you need to have to consult, they can show you the facility, you know, whether it's a bigger college, um, whether it's a smaller training school. Um, there is even some kind of private companies that can do it in really small groups or like even one to one. So it's looking at all the options what's going to suit you in terms of time finances location but really obviously the kind of job coaches would be the best to speak to because everybody will offer something different and um, but definitely follow your dream follow your passion and um, like so you've proved if you want to do something there's a way oh, yeah. thank you <laughs> no, I think because that when i was at high school talking about different things and i think they need more people um talking about if they can do it because i think they probably be like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can work with customers. I don't know. Because to be honest, I feel like that myself. But um, older I get, I realise nothing to be worried about because uh, people are very kind. Thank you, sir. Laura and all that have been so good to me, supported me. And I think uh, it's all about um, having a confidence and yeah. confidence will grow. Yeah, when you're young, it's difficult. You don't have a lot of confidence. Um, but yeah, I think it's just believing in yourself and really wanting it bad enough to be willing to do things that are maybe hard or the learning, it's really hard. When I was in college, I thought beauty therapists just sit there like a bit dumb and they paint nails all day and all this, you know, but it's not the, the first year that I've done is like that. It's just fun. But the HND is quite difficult, you know, and when I was mm -hmm. towards the end of that two year course, people were dropping out. See, just before we had like three or four months left to go at a three year course, Girls were just quitting and falling out because it's really difficult. It's anatomy, physiology, um, it's physics and machines, it's the structures yeah. of the body, the muscles. Um, 
it was really, really intense. Um, it wasn't what I thought it would be, and it was quite an artificial way to learn. And you're thinking, how are all these things going to tie in when I go to work? And also, you're just practicing on each other, which isn't what salons are like because not everybody comes in with no sore back and no issues with their skin because we're all young then, so we have no back issues. We don't generally have any skin issues. Whereas when you get in a salon, you maybe have a lady and she has lots of health issues and you need to understand what are all these medications she's just told you she's on. Is, is she allowed to have this treatment or is she contraindicated? How is that going to affect her blood pressure? So you've got to know how to handle that because you need to be there to look after the client. You can't go ahead with a treatment that might cause them harm. Um, or like when you're working with a machine, you need to understand that some of these machines, obviously you need to know the physics because... Their, say if they're galvanic or radio frequency or whatever, if you don't move them on the skin properly or have the right product to guide them like a conductor, you can burn the skin, you know. So unlike so with you with your leg, you know, you can take the skin off. There's lots of things you could do wrong. So you, 90% of it is the knowledge rather than it being practical. I always thought when I was learning, it was mostly practical. But for a good therapist, it's not. If you really know your stuff, it makes all the difference in what you provide. I didn't know that. Yeah. I really thought. I, I didn't expect it either. Yeah. But um, they'd know behind it. Wow. And at that point, it's not fun because you're just learning textbook, 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 and you're working. You know, I had a newborn baby. I was working in the Hilton and I was doing this full time. And it just gets quite overwhelming, you know. So I'm not surprised that a lot of people did drop out. But for me, I was like, it was really, really hard because I was a new mum. I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to boss it. And I'm going to manage one of these salons one day. And it's visualising it and like manifesting it. And then within three years, I had got my first manager's position and I was just so chuffed. Oh, and you've done amazing. So, oh, nice. I just do the behalf of passion for it and you work hard. Yeah. You build a new dream. Yeah. Because you've got to work hard to get in the dream, not you? Yeah, but I think it's the environment. Like a few years ago when I had the big salon and all the staff and things and we were having lots of bother with people cancelling, not showing, whatever, um, I actually just felt I lost my passion and I was actually going to give up my mm -hmm. full job and retrain. But what I realised was it was obviously the anxiety and the stress of dealing with staff. I didn't enjoy it because I'm quite soft and people take advantage of that kindness for a weakness. Um, I was probably doing the best in terms of earnings, but you're having to pay everybody else first. But also thinking about all the other things in the running of the salon takes away from the client experience. So when I gave the salon up and went to work for home, just one on one, that's where I actually feel like my passion came back even more than before, because now I could make it bespoke, just my own and control, you know, the heat and the lighting and the blankets and the nice touches and the oils and the candles and it was just me and the client and there was no interruption and then that's just when I started getting obsessed with it again and I was thinking what other treatments can I do and then all these new skin things were coming on and um, that's just been really exciting. I've really enjoyed it. Do you got any more, more new things coming on? So in the last year you've seen a few wee bits and bobs that are advanced so obviously we're looking to look after the client for the inside out so like say so your intramuscular injections so like your B12, your biotin, your vitamin C which are amazing. Um, your skin tag removal so where that's kind of just a general treatment though because of covid and because the nhs aren't offering it people feel really conscious about skin tags warts and things like that uh, I feel the crunk, crunk. The, um, i've got them on my neck and we're going out i'm going out next friday i'm going to do it and i'm thinking mm -hmm. but so being able to offer that, although it's not a specific beauty treatment, I like being able to provide it for my existing clients. And obviously they know I'll do a good job, I'll look after the skin, I'll have good aftercare. Um, obviously all the advanced skin bits we were talking about. Um, i done doing a fat dissolving course, which is amazing. I've What's had it called? done fat dissolving. Mm -hmm. So it's like a liquid that you inject. So I've had it done before, see for a wee chin, wee double chin. Uh, also, it's quite good to see what areas people that are maybe their ideal weight, but they just carry fat. So, like, say for women, a lot of times the tummy. So, like, after my daughter, I definitely feel like a wee bit at the top. It could be this wee part, you know, that sticks out the bra, uh, folds in the back. So, it's not a weight loss thing. It's for somebody that's, you know, proportioned. And with women, we always fold fat in different areas. So, the fat dissolving is amazing. I've got loads of friends that love getting on their tummy since having their children. Um, 
and my hydrofacial machine. That's my new toy, so that's quite exciting. So I'm just been bringing things in slowly. So it does all this like water dermal abrasion, uh, purifying, ultrasonics like firming and toning, and then we have an oxygen mist we spray then just to kill the skin. So that does a lot at a deeper level because of how the uh, pulses come out. You know, so the radio frequency, the ultrasonic, what they do, how they push the products into the skin, but without needles. Um, and then obviously the skin boosters, which are obviously maybe somebody that doesn't want to do Botox or fillers. They want something more than their facial. So we put this hyaluronic acid just under the skin, so we just inject just under. Um, that's amazing. So you can do it for face, you can do it for neck and decollete, particularly in older ladies, you know, this area, or the hands can kind of give it away, you know, the age. So that's quite exciting. Um, and then we're going to roll that out this year. And then next year, ideally, what I would like is to get some advanced skin machines. So I don't know if you've seen the one that's for body. It's the booty lifting one, you know, the peachy bum. You know, it's all like the big device that lifts and sucks, you know, so the, the back of the thighs and it lifts your bottom. So it's like, you now when you go to the gym and you squat, this machine's kind of doing the workout. Mm -hmm. And you can literally see in one session, the bum comes in and the glutes tighten up. Um, and obviously it's improving, you know, the texture and the tone of the skin. Who doesn't want that? And I've um, done a lot. So <laughs> that'll be next year. Um, and uh, a few other kind of skin machines and things. So that's hopefully what I'm hoping to do. But if things keep going the way they're going, it's definitely possible. I mean, I can't wait to be you know, bringing out more treatment at the meeting. I know. It's I got many to from there. You'll be able to review them all. You'll be trying them all. <laughs> Maiden, wow. No, I'm going to come and book in some treatment. Hope to quite soon. I think I need it. Definitely. Oh, I've not. Amazing. I'm really, like, loving your knowledge. I mean, different training, different. It's amazing how much you know. And I'm trying to think any more questions. Well, the good thing is you'll never know everything. There's always new things coming out. And whether, while not all of them might suit my business, I'm always interested in what's going on. But I'll pick and choose things that I know my clients would enjoy. So like, you're never done learning. You'll never know everything. <clears throat> Even like um, when we had the salon before, <coughs> we used to get girls in for college on work experience and they would come in the salon. That's really fun. Sometimes these girls would teach me techniques or massage movements that I didn't know. So you can always learn, you know, for different mm -hmm. people. Um, so I love that, you know, the girls would come in and give them a taste of what it would be like in a nice way. Whereas when I was younger, my work experience was quite bitchy and... You know, so being able to show them that was exciting, but also you're learning from them. And I think it makes them feel good because new women to learn from them what they've learned. But some people are like, oh, I haven't better than you, I, I know better than you. But sometimes it doesn't work. Like that. I'm a thing myself. Things of pain when I was little, I went hearing stories from other people. Things of pain that I'm learning from them too. So it's all about learning with each other because them. It's good to put it on. And you've that. been a role model as well. So, like, say for your children, seeing you leading the way, what you're doing, I think that's pretty cool. Awesome. Thank you. And you've got a wee better thing, eh, not thing, better um, person, not person. Well, I suppose she has a person. You've got a wee. Lola. Uh -huh. So, Lola is my wee teacup chihuahua. And even when I had the salon, so like when I got her when she was eight weeks old, she has been in the salon environment. So those chihuahuas are normally not great with people. She's actually really good. Oh, I made them. And what we find is obviously pet therapy is like actually a recognised thing now. You know, obviously dogs, you know, can be, you know, like anti-anxiety dogs and uh, things like that. So Lola does a bit of pet therapy. So for certain treatments, like say facial, depending on what you're doing, um, she can come in and she'll go calm and relax you. It's like wakey, she's doing a wee bit of energy healing. Um, so she just adds a wee something. Or if she can't come in during the treatment, she'll like to come in at the end and say hello. I don't mean I love, I love Dina. I'm going to come to a wee hello. And I'm like, you know, um, it too, I think pet, dog, when I do, and I think for me, uh, I've got a dog myself, I think, um, it just takes away my anxiety. And then, mm -hmm. come into the salon, meet Nora, I went to the treatment. The dog must die, you feel welcome, and you feel comfortable with that in the treatment. Yeah. It's all about the people experience for, for the clients, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. 
and I think dogs are such good like, judges of character as well you know um, and not everybody likes animals which is fine and um, some of them might not want Lola to come for a wee visit which is very very Speaking strange truth. but Speaking yeah truth. some people are more cat people maybe don't like dogs or I've got some clients that actually have allergies to mm-hmm. dogs so like that day I would make sure that Lola wasn't in the salon at all but I think most people do love animals I love animals I love animals too uh, I love animals I've got a dog and two rabbits Hard I work, used to have but... rabbits as well. I literally, we used to have like a menagerie when I was young. My mum, we had like tortoise, terrapins, oh, really? uh, chinchillas. We had lovebirds. We had rabbits. We had dogs. We had cats. It literally was like a zoo. Oh, it was crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's no, I like rabbit was all good up for me. Yeah. I'm just checking to see if I've covered everything. Um, I think we've covered everything. I think the only one question that I would like to ask before we finish. Uh-huh. How, um, like for example, the height of the store, all the big buildings, all that, how would you make that more accessible for people with hearing loss? Because it's some of the worst is quite complicated. Do you have any visuals or booklets or anything for them to look up on? So I think for a lot of it that's existing, I probably have a lot more information. Like you said, these things that are newer, I don't maybe have as much as that, but going forward, I will do I'll have more like written things. Um, and as I say, what we've got is obviously where before they come, we consult, you know, so we can do the Zoom, we can do captions, we can do things like that. I think when they come in, obviously, if we can communicate in my lip reading, I will explain everything in so much detail that you feel in control, um, every step's explained, that you're in control, I will obviously let you know, like, see so needles, like you were saying, if you have needle phobia and things like that, so letting you know that I'm ready, you have to let me know then you're ready, be relaxed, but I think if you trust the person, you can be more relaxed, it being done properly, and being all over, that actually probably build confidence, you know, so getting it done, feeling okay with it, um, and being in control, if somebody has a panic, decide, no, I don't want to go through, but it's fine, and we'll just stop, you know, we're not like pushing them to, we're just going to tell you what these things do, if you want to have it, I'll find a way to make it accessible, I'll find ways to do it, I'm to explain thinking. it, so that before we do it, you feel comfortable, I wouldn't go ahead with anything if you didn't say, see if you said I'm 100%, like we chatted about B12 for a while, mm-hmm. I had to make sure that you were 100% before I'd done that for you, you let me know you were feeling a wee bit wary about needles, we just took our time to explain it all, um, so I hope that obviously made you feel better. New government, new paper, new model, new new um other business, new other salon. They're gonna learn from you as well, not just me, well, they but the day, are. um probably gonna be the first. Well, see a lot of my friends, because obviously in this community we all know each other and things like that. So that's been nice. And the other girls I know that do beauty, makeup, nails hair and you know quite a lot of them i've told them all about you about my experience what you've taught me what you've learned then they're looking at obviously what you've been doing to see what they can bring into their salons and again i've said to them now you'd probably speak to them you know so that they can get more um inclusive as well so i think it's just like a ripple effect it's just going to go and people are excited because they're like i was so ignorant i didn't know that i wasn't inclusive um so, yeah, I think it's really, really good, really positive. Yeah, because um, you weren't able to do that. I just want um, the girls or even people married to be um, not left out. Mm-hmm. We are entitled to come to Starland. We can do what we want to do. I think I could have been the right person. And because of being your and stuff like that, after the video, a lot of people are going to be like, wow. Um, it's what they need. Yeah, and Don't it's just to understand. where you want to go. Somebody might not like me, might want to, uh, maybe a younger girl might want to go into a big salon, mm-hmm. you know, and have more of that experience now, social, lots going on, uh, different things. Yeah, because I think it needs to have the confidence to speak to the salon, but that they learned from my mistake when I just went in, I trusted them, mm-hmm. but they couldn't communicate with me, and I think that went wrong. So please, please, Speak to the therapist. I'm making sure you know, uh, connect and you understand each other before starting treatment. You don't want it to go wrong. 
No, but again, you shouldn't even move forward to consultation if you get the vibe that the True. client's not feeling it. Um, but it's funny to think all these little things and all conversations that had have led to this. So, like, say, if I didn't join the GGC in the lockdown, I would never have met, like, Lauren Heather. I would never have met you. And then look at all the kind of relationships that have been built for that. I just think in my industry, it's generally not women supporting women. Whereas now, I really feel it is. Like, see, we Laura, we Heather, yourself, um, all the other amazing ladies that I've met. We really do support each other. We help each other. We share each other's content. But it's all genuine, you know. There's nothing, like, fake in it. And that's just so refreshing. Yeah, that too. too. I feel that as well. Um, Laura is the founder of the Great Cougar Road Club. So we are not... I know, but you're in the business club. Yeah. It's amazing. So if you want to check it out and all to Heather, Heather would you like is to... my social media. So Heather at One for Growth, Heather and Becca do my social media for me and they are absolutely amazing. But even during lockdown, Heather engaged with me and she actually gave me a lot of free content, uh, free advice. And I just, again, it's a vibe. I just really liked her. Um, she's just such a lovely person. So between the two, I have learned so much. Got more confidence, same as yourself been to these different events, bit of networking, but still fun and social as well, because as mums need to get out more. Yeah, yep. Definitely. I would thank the um, Instagram Blue and check them out, because um, they are very inclusive as well, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They, Laura, Heather and Alison are um, an example of trying to make their business more accessible. So, um, and I think why I've started this business, then I cannot wait to see how you are going to do and you guys are making that I think thank you all so much for including me and asking me to help you all out. Thank you. You're welcome, but no, thank you. I mean, all, all this has come about for you, so you need to acknowledge that as well. You've done amazing. Oh, thank you. You are leading the way. You have, your confidence has grew so much, same from when I first met you, and I watched you doing your videos and your podcasts, and I'm just dead proud of you. So, um, and your confidence has grown, I can see that. And you've done, you do well. I mean, you've done a lot. And I think you've done absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to see what we're going to do next for new treatment. I'm so excited. I know, the two are living our best life. <laughs> I think I'm going to finish here. I mean, we've covered a lot. We've talked um, a lot, as usual. <laughs> fun. It's so much fun. So, yeah, I'm going to end this. So, do you want to say bye? Bye.